Hello there, this is video five in our series of going through how a sound desk works. Um, so we've already talked about uh, the input connections, we've talked about the gain and how to set that up, we've talked about tone control and equalisation, we've talked about auxiliary sends, when to use them, how they work, um, the two different types, and now we're going to be talking about this section of the desk which includes a pan knob. Now for those of us old enough to remember or have had a traditional hi-fi, that's the balance control, the left and right. And we've got a mute button and we've got a peak indi indicator light and a button labeled PFL. If I just zoom in on the iPad, you'll be able to see what we're talking about there. So it's just underneath the auxiliary set, uh, send section from the previous video. And there you can see we've got the pan, the mute, the peak light, uh, which is PK exclamation mark peak, and PFL, and the PFL round circle is a button, a physical button to press. So, um, doing, taking them one at a time, the pan control simply controls whether the sound goes out of the left channel, the right channel, or both. So when it's at the middle position, 12 o'clock, it will send an equal amount out of left and right. Um, so virtually all of your microphones will be set to panned centre, um, because if um, assuming your main PA is in stereo with the speaker left and right side of the stage or the platform, um, we want you know, you, your lecture, mic or whatever, you want to come out of both speakers. Um, so virtually always in a church setting, the pan will be 12 o'clock centre. Um, Sometimes, if you were micing up a drum kit, for example, the, the two stereo overheads, or the two overhead mics, to turn them into stereo, you might put one of them more left and one of them more right. Uh, and you would pan them left-right according to how the audience, that the congregation, sees the drummer, rather than how the drummer is sat there. Um, so, you might pan it fully left and right, or hard left-right, it's sometimes, uh, sometimes called, or maybe just at kind of like nine o'clock, three o'clock for left and right. Um, and you might also use it creatively with singers in a band, um, where you, you might separate, if you've got two, um, two singers, um, generally two males or two females, um, you might um, give them a bit more left and a bit more right, um, again, according to how the audience see them. Um, and it, it, it does enhance the mix, it definitely does. Um, you probably ought to do it having sound check the band um, because if one of them stops singing then suddenly you've got a lady singing from over there and not over there. So you kind of need to work with your musicians a little bit. So probably the easiest thing is to leave them all sent panned in the middle, centred. Um, I've also used it creatively when I've done a larger um, um, jazz band on stage. Um, and for, for that scenario, any instrument that's slightly left of centre, I might pan a bit more left, as in on stage left of centre. Um, any that's a bit more right, I might pan right a little bit, just so that the sound follows where they are on stage. Um, just for the audience, that just gives, it's just more natural, uh, natural sounding. But, uh, so you can use pan creatively. If in doubt, leave it at 12 o'clock, don't worry about it. The next thing we have is a mute button, and that does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, you press the mute button and the little light comes on, uh, what if I got the desk powered up, and the light comes on and um, that channel goes silent. Now depending on the desk that you've got, when you press the mute, it might mute just the sound out of the main speakers or it might mute the sound in the auxiliaries, that depends on the desk. Um, so you need to have a read of the instructions to find out what that does or simply play with it. Play with the desk and you'll, you'll quickly find out. Um, but the mute spot stops the sound. The peak light, this little indicator, PK exclamation mark on here. Um, if you've got an input source that's too loud, um, that will come on um, to alert you to the fact that that channel is overloaded and distorting and, and indeed risks doing damage to the PA system. If you watch the gain video and have set the gain correctly, then you shouldn't get that peak light coming on unless something fundamentally changes. Um, so for example, if a guitarist plugs in or unplugs their microphone without telling you, um, then when they plug it in, the peak light might flash and you might hear a thump out of your PA system. Um, but ordinarily that shouldn't come on. And as I say, if you've set the gain up properly, it certainly shouldn't come on at all ever. 
Um, this PFL button, um, pre-fader listening, that stands for PFL. So if you want to listen to um, just one channel, we can plug headphones in the desk in the top right corner. Um, and if you press that PFL button, um, you just get the sound of the respective source out of your headphones. So if there's no PFL button pressed, um, and there's generally a light, there is a light over here, it's just by the, the main meters. So when you press that PFL, the light comes on to alert you to the fact that somewhere on the desk there's a PFL pressed. Um, if no PFL is pressed, you generally get left, right in your head headphones, the main mix. And if you press, a, press a, um, a PFL on a channel, you just hear that channel. So um, generally don't use that on um, platform mics such as the main lectern mic or the pulpit mic, what have you. Um, but in a band, I'll quite often um, pre-fade listen, solo as it's sometimes called on some desks. I'll quite often solo a band member because I want to hear how they're singing or what they're playing. Um, electric guitarists, um, I might solo the electric guitarist um, and when they're playing a riff, um, I might turn them up a bit more um, and then back them back off again when they stop playing that riff. Um, that kind of thing. So you use it for um, setting up. You might use it to check if you've got something a bit quiet. You might use it to check if you're actually getting a sound in on that channel. Um, or like I say, you can use it to solo um, a particular instrument as part of the creative side of, of doing sound. So that's that section, the, the balance, mute and prefade listening.